Matthew Sucky here from Verity Baptist Church Manila, providing you another video on the topic of Calvinism. And what I want to talk to you about in this video is the logical arguments that the Calvinists like to use. Now look, I'm not a philosophical person. You know, I'm a math-oriented person. 2x plus 5 equals 7. You know, the answer to that is x equals 1. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. And so look, if there's things I don't fully comprehend, you know, I don't try to get all super philosophical and fully logically understand it. I just believe what the Bible says. Because frankly, there's some things like, where did God come from that, hey, I know God's real, I can look outside, but it doesn't mean I can fully comprehend that in my human mind. And so Calvinists, though, they really like to have logical arguments. And this is what you see with a lot of people that never believe on Jesus Christ, is if they don't logically understand it, they choose not to believe it. Now, our faith is not blind faith, because what we believe makes sense. But, you know, to, to say you're not going to believe something until you fully logically comprehend it is a foolish thing to do. Now, one of the big logical arguments Calvinists like to do, because they're full of debate, you know, as the Bible says wicked people are in Romans 1. They love to just debate about this. And they'll say this, well, you know what? Yeah, you can show me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of verses that talk about how he died for every man. But they say, you know what, that doesn't logically make sense. And they'll say this, well, here's the thing. You know, if, if Jesus died for every man and he paid for their sins, but then they reject Jesus Christ and go to hell and pay for their own sins, then that means that the sins were paid for twice. Because Christ died for everyone's sins and paid for everyone's sins, but some choose to reject and go to hell to pay for their own sins, so that means the payment was, was made twice. And they say, well, then God is unjust to allow that payment to go forth twice instead of once. Now look, they can use logical arguments all they want, but that doesn't change the fact that there's a hundred verses or more that say he died for everyone. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. He died for the sins of the world, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, or 1 John 2, 2. And so not for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world, the Bible says. And so yeah, he died for everyone's sins. And it doesn't make, it doesn't really matter to me whether you fully comprehend that. It doesn't really matter to me what your logical argument is about the payment's gone for twice, blah, blah, blah. What does the Bible say? And so look, I, these logical arguments are, are stupid, they're pointless, because what really matters is what does the Word of God say? And if the Word of God says that Jesus died for everybody's sins, and then some people choose to reject Jesus Christ and pay for their own sins, hey, that's the way it is. I don't care if it logically makes sense to you or not. And so they try to play games with changing the names and stuff like that. Well, you know, the sins were paid for but not atoned or vice versa and things like that. Look, you know, I'm not into these super philosophical and logical arguments. Okay, you know, I just believe what the Bible says. And I just take for face value in John 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And so if you believe on Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life, but if you don't, God's wrath abides on you. And look, those people, yeah, they're going to go to hell to pay for their own sins, to, be suff to suffer and be tormented for each and every one of their sins. It doesn't matter if this logically doesn't make sense to you Calvinists. And they've got a million arguments like this. But what it shows is they can't argue against the Bible because there's hundreds of verses and their whole argument against it is that doesn't logically make sense to me. Why is it that Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in the Trinity? That doesn't logically make sense to me. It doesn't matter if it logically makes sense to you or not. What matters is does the Bible teach it? Thank you and God bless.